Hey guys, it's Trisha. Welcome back to my channel. Since it is December and I am fairly new to the booktube community, I decided to do a tag video that I have not done before. In honor of Harry Christmas to you, I'm going to be doing the ultimate Harry Potter book tag. So when I was thinking of videos that I wanted to do this month, I was chatting about it with Hannah um, from The Rainy Reader, and she mentioned that I should do this tag because I hadn't done it, and it is the perfect time of year for it since I am rereading the books for Harry Christmas to you. So I will link her video down below in the description box. Okay, so there are 30 questions in this tag, so we are going to just jump right on in. Question number one, favorite book. For this, it is undoubtedly gonna be Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is my favorite book because I like that with this story, we get to see a lot of depth to the story from the history of why Voldemort attacked Harry, we get to see that there is something deeper there rather than just a random attack. And then I also really love Sirius and Remus. They're two of my favorite characters in the series. So I love that we get to spend a lot of time with Lupin in this book. And we got introduced to Sirius. We don't get a lot of him in here, obviously, but I like that the way that he's introduced. So those are the reasons that this is my favorite book of the bunch. Question number two, least favorite book? For this one, I'm gonna go with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now, I'm going with this one, not because it's my least favorite book, if I'm if I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't really have a least favorite book. Each one has elements that I absolutely love. And then each book has things that, you know, they're not my favorites. But this one is one that when when it released, I had a hard time getting through the beginning of it. I wasn't a big reader until I started reading Harry Potter. And so this one was difficult for me because I didn't understand why the first chapter didn't focus on Harry for the opening. That was a little strange to me. And then I'm not the biggest sports fan. So I had difficulty. It took me a long time to read the Quidditch World Cup scene. So that's the reason I'm going to have to list this one as my least favorite book. Question number three, favorite movie. So for this one, I definitely think it's got to be Order of the Phoenix. This one gives the darker elements and shows the transition for the darker side of the story, the turn that the series takes. It kind of happens in book four, but you really get to see it in, um, in movie five, visually, you get to see it. Everything's a lot darker and it was very visually stunning. And I like the way that they visually took us on a ride for the darker side of the wizarding world. Number four, least favorite movie. For this one, I'm going to have to go with Chamber of Secrets. I feel like there were things that I would have liked to have seen done differently in this. It wasn't how I would have envisioned it, um, the adaptation going. Question number five, favorite quote. So there's lots of really great quotes throughout the entire series, but one that really stuck with me was a quote from Sirius from Order of the Phoenix, and I'm going to read it off here. We've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. I really love this quote because it shows that there is, it's not black and white. Nobody is good, pure good or pure evil. There's, there's lots of gray areas and there's lots of gray areas in, in who we are from day to day that can change all the time, but really choosing the good, choosing the light and doing the best you can. And it's really about how you strive to be good. That's what really matters. All right, into the characters section. Number six, favorite Weasley. So for this one, it's a toss up between Ginny and Mr. Weasley. 
I love Arthur. I think that his quirky fascination with muggles is really endearing and that he wants to learn. And I think that's so sweet. I think that he is such an adorable character, such an adorable little old man. <laughs> so he's probably my favorite Weasley tied right there with Ginny. Number seven, favorite female character. So for this one, I... I want to say Hermione. Uh, I, I, I really do. Fun fact, actually, I am currently listening to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire on my commute to and from work. And I got to the part where the morning after Harry's name comes out of the Goblet of Fire. Hermione is such a good friend, you guys. Like, I, I, I forget. And I just, I love how sweet of a person she is and how thoughtful she is when it comes to others because when she comes to him in the morning right when he's getting ready to go down for breakfast and she brings him the stack of toast and she's just like want to go for a walk and she doesn't she doesn't pressure him to talk about anything she doesn't she doesn't badger him but she can see that he is just so distressed and she's such a good friend you guys that she she recognizes this and she sees this and she knows that you know he just needs to take some time away from everything and just get out of the castle and so I cried I I was driving to work this morning and I cried at that scene it's embarrassing <laughs> um so I want to say Hermione is is definitely my favorite female character all right number eight favorite villain Umbridge is awful. Um, but I have a favorite villain that is besides like, I absolutely hate this person's guts. I love Barty Crouch Jr. I, I, I mean, like, I love to hate him. I think it is so amazing that he just, he thought this process through. That is genius and 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 super awful and and i don't like him as a person obviously but just wow that's that's insane so i really love him as a villain as one of my favorites because of how amazing this whole process was for him to bring back the dark lord number 9 favorite male character for this one it's got to be harry gotta be Harry with the exception of Sirius Black because I love him so much. So Sirius is like my favorite side character male, but I love Harry. I mean, we wouldn't have the series without him. Question number 10, favorite professor. So from the books, it has got to be Professor McGonagall. All that sass. I love her so much in Order of the Phoenix. Like, girl's got some attitude. I love her. From the movies, however, I love Professor... Professor... From the movies, I love Professor Trelawney. I think that Emma Thompson did a phenomenal job at bringing that character to life. So she's my favorite from the movies, but McGon McGonagall, my favorite from the books. All right, now some would you rather. Number 11, would you rather wash Snape's hair or listen to Lockhart talk about himself all day? So for this one, I'm going to go with listen to Lockhart talk about himself all day because dude can talk and you can tune him out and you don't even have to participate in the conversation and you don't have to listen to a thing he says. He won't even know that you're not listening. He's just so into himself that you could probably just walk away and he won't even notice he left the room. Either that or... Or you could engage in the conversation with him and really start digging out and listening to him come up with some crazy stuff that he did in defeating dark creatures. I think that would be pretty fun to screw with him and just see how outlandish of stories you could get him to come up with. Number 12, would you rather duel an elated Bellatrix or a pissed off Molly? I would probably go with Duel a Pissed Off Molly. 
Yeah, she wouldn't use any unforgivable or dark curses. Number 13, would you rather travel to Hogwarts on the Hogwarts Express or by a flying car? So for this one, I am definitely going to go with the flying car option. I, over the summer, took an 18-hour train trip to Central California for vacation, and let me tell you, that was not fun. It was, it was fun to take a train for the first time. Yeah, that was cool, whatever. But it was so painful not being able to get up and like stretch yourself properly, not to have your own room and do whatever you want. I think if we, you could take a flying car, you'd be able to take some rest stops at your own leisure and you can get out and like actually walk around and you have control over the radio, I guess. I feel like from my experience of being on a train, it was just too cramped and just not something that I would like to experience again. Number 14, would you rather kiss Voldemort or give Umbridge a bubble bath? Okay, so are we talking Voldemort Voldemort or Tom Riddle Voldemort? Because if it was Tom Riddle, I could do that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, But if it's Voldemort with like the no, no nose thing, no, no, I'm not going to do that. So I could give Umbridge a bubble bath, but like squirting some some bubbles in the water and like making it all nice and like, I don't know, like give her some candles and like a glass of wine or whatever and just like put her in there and then leave because technically I gave her a bubble bath. Number 15, would you rather write a hippogriff or a firebolt? Ooh, ooh, that's a hard one. I mean, do I want to ride a thin piece of wood that I would clearly fall off of because I'm scared of heights and would definitely fall off? Or do I want to ride an animal with wings that would probably make me fall off from the motion of the wings and I'm terrified and would fall off because I'm terrified of heights? Is there like a non-option on this one? All right, book to movie adaptations. Number 16, is there a character that you felt differently about in the books versus the movies? For this one, I definitely felt differently about Neville throughout the entire series in the books versus the movies. I feel like the movies didn't do his character justice at all because there were some of the there were some of the little tidbits that had to do with Harry's past and and his parents and Neville's parents and the prophecy and all of that I feel like there were bits that were missing that really built Neville's character because we didn't get to see in the movies how Neville was actually a chosen one that Neville could have been the one that you know that Harry ended up being he could have been that and I feel like his transition throughout the the movies wasn't it, it was kind of just like night and day like there was no real gradual transition and I feel like we had more of a transition with him in the books and we got to know him a little bit better especially with his parents and seeing them at St. Mungo's and all of this other stuff so I felt much deeper for him and I, I really cared for him as a character in the books whereas in the movies I feel like he got really left behind. Number 17 is there a movie that you preferred over the book? No, I, I don't think there was a movie that I preferred over the book. There are elements of the movies that I really thought were very well done as adaptations from the books, but as a whole, there has not been a movie that I felt did the story more justice than the book did. Number 18, Richard Harris or Michael Gambon as Dumbledore. This one I've definitely got to go with Michael. I felt like he had a, a more nuanced grasp of the character. There were some things that I didn't fully like about his character, his characterization of Dumbledore, but I felt like you got to see more depth to his Dumbledore 
maybe because we had him for more movies than Richard Harris, but I felt like Richard Harris had a, a characterization of Dumbledore that was very flat and it was very much like a um, a sweet old man who might have some sort of secret, but not much more than that. It wasn't really in depth. Number 19, your top event or thing or person that wasn't included in the movie that annoyed you most. I feel like the the thing that annoyed me most was the the overall story and true depth of the the marauders how that played into the the prophecy and how after the fact it it all unraveled so i feel like that overall was something that was really missing when i was discussing the series with my sister i was telling her you know about she'd never seen all the movies and and we were talking and i was telling her a little bit about it and um i realized in telling her about the movies so that she could understand some more of the the nuanced details about the movies that it was the hardest to try to explain the Marauders to someone who's only ever experienced the movies and that there's all of this sub story and subplot there that I really wanted to have been included in the movies. I think that it would have added such a, a a richness to the story for people who are only experiencing the movies. I forgot what number I was on. Number 20. If you could remake any Potter movie, which would it be? Okay, so I would for sure remake the third movie, Prisoner of Azkaban. Correction. I would edit the third movie or refilm a scene for the third movie. I don't care about the rest of the movie. The rest of the movie was great. But y'all screwed up the beginning with his doing the wand and doing the spell to cast the light. Like, Lumos, he can't do that. It's summer holidays. Like, we're not even 30 seconds into the movie and you already screwed up one of the key components to the series is that they can't do magic outside of school. So, I would redo the movie or edit or refilm that scene to fix that because y'all screwed up with it. Which house was your first gut feeling that you would be a part of? So in reading this, I, I, I wanted to be a Gryffindor. Like, let's be real. I was 13 years old. I, I wanted to, I wanted to be a Gryffindor because they made Slytherins look bad, but I knew deep, deep down that I was not a Gryffindor. I don't know why, but I just knew I wasn't that. Number 22, which house were you actually sorted into on Pottermore or any online quizzes? Slytherin! I was in Slytherin every single time. This is, well, this is my scarf that I made myself this last week. I made myself another Slytherin-themed scarf because I I love this color green. It's so beautiful. That is where my soulmates are. That is where I, that is where I feel most at home and I get it. Like I am Slytherin through and through. And so the fluke time I got Gryffindor, but I don't know why my ambition and, and drive to do whatever it is that I set my mind to is through the roof. If I decide I want to do something, I will do it. It will get done. So... That's definitely why I fall into Slytherin every single time. Number 23, which class would be your favorite? So, okay, hold up. So, so my favorite class would be Charms, for sure. But as I was running down the list of the different classes uh, and, you know, what I would think of them, I thought about Divination. And so I got to go back. And I got to edit one of my answers. <laughs> so for question number 19, which event person thing that was left out of the movie annoyed you most? So I said the Marauders backstory and all that good stuff and the depth of the, the prophecy and all of that history. 
spot. Your girl was upset, like, real mad that they didn't put Firenze in divination when Trelawney, when Trelawney was fired. Like, she's just, in the movie, Trelawney is just fired and, and then they never have another divination class. Like, I really wanted that aspect of Order of the Phoenix to be in there. So, I, I gotta go back and I gotta amend that answer. Forenzi definitely needed to be in book five, in movie five. All right, back on track to question number 24. Which spell do you think would be most useful to learn? So it's a spell that I don't know the name of. I don't know if there is a name. I don't know if they ever named it. But I would love to know some of the household charms that Molly uses to clean her dishes. I hate washing dishes. I don't have a dishwasher. I haven't had a dishwasher in years. So... Give me any spell that will clean my house for me. That is what I want. That is all that I want in life, is a spell, something to clean my house for me. Number 25, which student at Hogwarts do you think you would be instant best friends with? For this one, I probably would get along really great with Jenny Weasley. Not at the beginning, not, not like in her first or second year, but definitely towards the uh, later, her later years in Hogwarts, I feel like I, I really connected with her. Um, either her or Hermione, I feel like, well, I mean, like I could just get along with anybody, really. And miscellaneous. Number 26, if you could own one of the hollows, which would you want? For this one, I, probably I would, I would want the invisibility cloak. Um, that would be really cool. That would be like, super helpful. Maybe at work, like I could put it on and then, I don't know, like hide around and, and, and do, do projects or things at work, things that need to get done. And then, and then I don't have to worry about people stopping me from, from doing some work that I need to get done. They can get things done pretty quickly that way. That would be awesome. Number 27. Is there any aspect of the books that you would want to change? In all honesty, no, I don't think that there's anything that I would want to change about it because I know that it was probably done for a reason. There are things that I don't like per se, but those things were done for reasons. And so I wouldn't want to change them because it would ultimately affect the way something else functions in the story. Number 28, favorite Marauder. I definitely have to go with Sirius on this one. Sirius is my baby. I love him. I miss him. I'm still, I'm real mad, real mad at his death. I get it. I know why it happened. Totally understand. But he was my favorite and I miss him. And I want to read all the serious fan fiction, all of it, all the time. That's my favorite. Number 29, if you could bring any character back to life, which would it be? Aside from Sirius, but I understand why it happened. I get it. it. It had to be done. So I would say either Fred or Dobby. Really now? Like you had to kill the sweetest character in the entire series. That, that hurt. So either one of those characters, if I could bring either one back, I think that would, would be fantastic. And number 30, Hollows or Horcruxes? Definitely Hollows because... Apparently it's really disgusting or really awful. The things that you have to do, the, the spell and the procedure and everything that has to be done in order to make a Horcrux. Not only that, but to make a Horcrux, you have to kill someone. I mean, that's the, the basis of it. But the other things that you have to do, which we've never learned what that is, that is just super awful. So making one is just terrible. And I, so I think that definitely hollows all the way, though the wand is questionable, very questionable because of the power that it grants the person who wields it. All right, so that is it for the Ultimate Harry Potter book tag. Thank you for sticking with me this far. 
on this one, I am not tagging anyone because this one's a little old and everybody's seen it. We've all, a lot of y'all have done it, so I don't have anyone to tag. Let me know in the comments down below what you think was left out of the movie that really upset you the most that you think should have been included. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future and get notifications on when I upload, be sure to click the like and subscribe button or even the notification button down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!